Hey guys, this is George and I'm back with a new video and today we're talking Terminator Dark Fate. So my wife actually ordered Amazon Prime and Terminator Dark Fate was on. So I finally watched Terminator Dark Fate and spoiler warning for this video, I actually really liked it. So there's a lot going on with Terminator Dark Fate. So here's some background on the film. Terminator Dark Fate is the sixth entry in the Terminator film franchise. It was directed by Tim Miller and produced by James Cameron, the original Helmer of the seminal Terminator and Terminator 2 Judgment Day, from which this movie is meant to be a sequel to, skipping over and ignoring the other entries, Terminator 3, Rise of the Machines, Terminator Salvation, and Terminator Genesis. And the film stars returning favorites Arnold Schwarzenegger as another T-800 model Terminator, and Linda Hamilton, who's reprising the role of Sarah Connor, along with newcomers to the franchise, Gabriel Luna as the antagonist Terminator Rev-9, Mackenzie Davis as Grace, a soldier from the future, and Natalia Reyes as Danny. And I'll just say she's a very special young woman. So even before the opening credits roll, this movie has a lot of baggage to unpack. Despite all of this, I think the movie succeeds on a lot of levels. So here's kind of a brief overview of the film. Be warned, spoilers follow, but I feel they're pretty important for my discussion of the film itself. So the film opens with a clip of a detained Sarah Connor and a quick glimpse of the future where Terminators rule. And we then cut to, I guess, Sarah Connor's past where we see John Connor is killed. John Connor is important because he is the original, I guess, savior of the future. He is the person who the Terminators originally came to kill. He was kind of a big deal, and so he's dead now. In a brief moment of distraction, a Terminator is able to assassinate John. This changes the future, and we cut to the present day in Mexico, where a new soldier arrives from the future, and this is Grace, and we quickly see that there's something unusual about her in the way she has like heightened speed, strength, and even kind of like a computerized version of the vision mode. It's very similar to the T-800's vision mode. We then cut to another part of Mexico where we're introduced to Danny, and she is the protagonist of the film and she's the woman who's actually destined to become basically the next John Connor. The Rev-9 soon arrives from the future also and narrowly misses crossing paths with Danny which probably would have resulted in the movie coming to an abrupt end if that had actually happened. But the Rev-9 is able to quickly assimilate into the populace and is able to obtain information on Danny's location after an interaction with Danny's father. And it's implied Danny's father was killed by the Terminator, but we actually don't see this happen on screen. Both Grace and the Rev-9 track Danny down to a factory where she works in Mexico. I think it's like a vehicle factory. Grace narrowly manages to fight off the Rev-9, giving them mere moments to escape. With the Rev-9 in pursuit, Grace and Danny are quickly surrounded by the Rev-9, which has the ability to split into a second Terminator. Those two Terminators are about to kill Grace and Danny, but then Sarah Connor makes her entrance fighting off the Terminators and allowing them to temporarily escape the Rev-9. And then we see kind of some drama with Grace because she soon succumbs to her injuries as well as something else. And we then flash forward to Grace's future and we see that in her future, she was grievously injured by a Terminator and basically is at death's door. And then we hear her say that she volunteers to be augmented. So then we cut to like a surgery room and we see that her surgery was successful and she's basically now an enhanced human. But there's a major setback in her newfound abilities and her enhancements in that her metabolism burns incredibly fast and she's meant for only short bursts of intense physical action and will quickly crash after extended exertion, which is what has happened to her in the present day. As Grace heals, her and Danny are reunited with Sarah who tracked them down again and they all escape together in search of a mysterious ally of Sarah's. So we soon learn that the mysterious ally is none other than the same T-800 who killed John at the beginning of the film and who's now is actually a family man and he sells home decor and he goes by the name of Carl. So understandably, Sarah is seething with hatred and has to actually be stopped and prevented from attacking the Terminator and probably trying to execute Carl. Carl then reveals to Sarah and the others that he gained autonomy and eventually he developed guilt over his actions and in an effort to atone for his actions as well as to give Sarah purpose 
to continue living, he'd been feeding her information about the temporal distortions that were in fact Terminators that she would then hunt down and destroy. And I actually would really like to see this explored in a comic book because it's unclear how many Terminators she stopped using the information that Carl gave her. And since Terminators tend to become more powerful, it would be interesting to see what kinds of Terminators she fought and managed to stop all on her own. But that's kind of like something I'd like to see in a comic book. I doubt we're gonna see anything like that in a film. So Sarah begrudgingly agrees to work with Carl but swears that when everything's over and once Danny is safe, she will take her revenge on him. And together they set out to find a weapon capable of stopping the Rev-9 Terminator, which is an EMP or electromagnetic pulse weapon. It completely disables electronic equipment. It shuts it down. And so I'm guessing that's what their hope is to shut down the Rev-9 and then I guess to destroy it once it's shut down. But unfortunately, the Rev-9 finds them while they're obtaining this weapon, and he actually ends up destroying the EMP weapon. And so Danny and team make their escape on a military plane, but they're still pursued by the Rev-9, who is able to catch up to them and nearly kills them all while bringing down this plane. So they crash into a dam where they narrowly make their escape with the Rev-9 still in pursuit. It's here that they decide to make their stand and actually manage to cause near catastrophic damage to the Rev-9, but it's not enough. In a last ditch effort, Grace pleads with Danny to remove her power core from her body and use it on the Terminator. She eventually does this, which does kill Grace. Grace was already kind of grievously injured. I think it was implied that she was gonna die anyways. So everyone's pretty much down and it's just Danny facing off of the Rev-9. And Danny's, you know, she's doing her best to fight off the Rev-9, but the Rev-9 eventually does get the upper hand on Danny and is about to kill her. But then Carl is able to step in and he restrains the Rev-9. And this allows Danny to plunge the power core into its head. But the Rev-9 is not done and it actually still continues to fight Carl. But Carl's able to not only restrain it, but drag it over a ledge where Carl restrains the Rev-9 long enough for the power core to eventually, I guess, overload and the power feedback ends up destroying them both. So now the Rev-9 is defeated, Carl's dead, Grace is dead, and another Judgment Day has been averted. And so at the very end of the movie, we cut to Danny and Sarah, and we see that they are now working together. And where we last see them, is where they've stopped at a playground and they're observing a small girl as she plays and that small girl is actually grace so it's kind of i think it's led for us to believe that grace is going to have probably a happier life and she's going to get to grow up and she's not going to have to go through that future because they managed to avert another judgment day at least for the time being and so danny and sarah now working together they both leave together in a jeep and they mentioned that they need to prepare for future conflicts, which basically implies that the next time a Terminator shows up. So wow, that recap took forever, but I kind of feel like it was necessary for us to discuss the film. So like I mentioned, I actually really like this film. Not as much as I like Terminator 1 and Terminator 2 Judgment Day, but I think I like it as much as I like Terminator 3 and Terminator Salvation. I actually didn't really like Terminator Genesis, so I would say I like Dark Fate a lot more than I like Terminator Genesis, even though Genesis has some interesting moments. So I've been a Terminator fan for a very long time and I've been here through the ups and the downs and you know, mostly the downward trend. And I followed the production of Dark Fate and I'm well aware of the controversy surrounding the film. But to be honest, the reason it took so long for me to watch the film is that I personally didn't really want to see the film based on the trailers that I saw. It just didn't look like it was going to be very good and so it took like a year or so for me to actually sit down and watch it. But thankfully I was wrong and I actually really enjoyed the film a lot. So to start with the positives, Arnold and Hamilton, they haven't missed a step and slipped back into the roles as if not a day had passed since 1991. So seeing them together on screen again is a delight and they still share an incredible on-screen chemistry. I personally was really impressed with Hamilton and I think her acting chops are still as fierce as her physical physique. She clearly came prepared for the role and I'm actually still left wondering why we never got more action films with her in the lead because she is as much a badass now as she was then. 
So for me, Arnold and Hamilton were probably my favorite aspects of the film, and they bring their characters to life in a way that left me wanting to see more of their characters. So I think if you're a fan of those characters and those actors, I think that's going to be something that might make this film really enjoyable for you as well, is seeing those two on screen together. With that being said, I did have a huge issue with how John Connor died. So way back in the beginning of the film, we see Sarah Connor on a beachfront patio seated with her back to an open area. Basically, her back's to the beach where anybody could walk up behind them. And this is literally what happened as Carl, pre-good Carl, walks up behind Sarah who's watching her son, John, who's smooth talking to girl at the bar and proceeds to terminate John. So this does not ring true to me at all because we're talking about Sarah Connor here. I'll put it to you this way. I'm a bit of a paranoid kind of guy and I always, always find a way to sit with my back to a wall, preferably from a vantage point where I can see everyone around me, all entrances and all exits at all times. And I'm just a regular guy. I've never had a Terminator come after me. So Sarah has had years of fighting Terminators. She is the most paranoid character I think I've ever seen in a film. And she has good reason to be after all. So in my mind, this scene was immediately suspect because I don't believe this would be a mistake that Sarah would make, ever. And I tried to rationalize it as a moment of weakness where she had actually allowed herself to relax. But then I keep thinking, nope, nope, this is Sarah freaking Connor. She has hidden stockpiles of weapons across the US and probably in other countries as well. And after the events of Judgment Day, she literally moved straight to Mexico to stay off the grid even after she stopped Judgment Day in Terminator 2. She would not be caught off guard like this. So for me, this was something that really irritated me. But I'd love to know what you all think. Do you think I'm kind of looking too much into this? Or do you honestly think, knowing Sarah Connor's character, that this was not a way that a Terminator would have been able to kill John? I would have liked to have seen it happen a different way. I think maybe an ambush or something like that. I feel with how much Sarah knows and how prepared she is, I feel that they would have had to have done a lot more to bring down John Connor. And I feel that, honestly, I feel like Sarah wouldn't have survived it. Sarah would have made sure she would have gone down in a hell of bullets before letting John die. But for the purposes of this movie, this is what they chose to do. And so you can let me know what you think in the comments section. Was this something that stuck out like a sore thumb to y'all? Or do you think that, you know, this is believable, it was a moment of weakness. So feel free to let me know in the comment section. The next thing I really liked and really hated about the film was Gabriel Luna's Rev-9 Terminator. I actually really liked Luna's portrayal of this Terminator and it felt like a logical progression from the T-1000 because he seemed to have more advanced emotions and his Terminator actually seemed like it could emote in a way the T-800 and T-1000 could not have done. It was a subtle effect that I thought Luna executed superbly, but I think it's something that may have slipped unnoticed by a lot of viewers. I also thought Luna's physique played into this really well also. Like Robert Patrick's T-1000, Luna appears to be thin and not overbearing. He blends in well with crowds and he can easily assimilate into a population even without modifying his appearance. I think this was the subtle terror the filmmakers were trying to get across with Luna's casting. And I think Luna's performance perfectly emits this overwhelming sense of dread from facing a Terminator that can so easily blend in with the populace. What I pretty much hated about the Rev-9 was the Terminator itself. I remember seeing the trailer and thinking, wow, that's it? It can just split itself in two? That's the best they could come up with in a new Terminator? Why not three or four? Why not more? At first, I thought it was essentially just two T-1000s, but after watching the film, it seems like Luna's portion of the Terminator is more liquid metal, and the second portion of the Terminator is closer to a T-800 model that Luna's portion is able to then merge and unmerge with at will. This was how I interpreted it in the film. So to me, the Rev-9 is basically a combination of a T-1000 and a T-800. Again, this was supremely disappointing to me, and I remember thinking after seeing the trailer and after seeing the film, this was the best they could come up with. To the credit of the Terminators featured in Terminator Genesis and Terminator 3 Rise of the Machines, both of those Terminators in those films seem more menacing and more of a threat to me 
then the Rev9. I'd love to know what you all think, but I just kept thinking the Rev9 as a main threat in a Terminator film seemed more like an early concept design at best that would probably have been left on the cutting room floor and not the actual main threat of a feature film. Although I will say in Grace's flashback scene, the Rev9 seemed incredibly threatening. It seemed to use its liquid metal body in a reactionary way, forming like spikes and bladed objects from its body and just cutting wildly all while moving with frightening speed. So I think if we would have seen this version of the Rev9 in the present day, I would have thought of it as more of a threat, but we mainly saw the subdued version of the Rev9, which was likely trying to avoid revealing its true nature to the general populace. So let me know what you all think. How do you feel about the Rev9? Do you think I'm being too hard on the concept of the Rev9? Or did you feel the same way? Were you disappointed that the Rev9 was just basically a T1000 and T800 put together? Do you think they could have done better? Because I really feel like they should have done better for a Terminator film. But then again, I guess the question is, if they keep increasing how dangerous the Terminators are, how powerful the Terminators are. What kind of present day weapons could we have that could actually fight against those things? So I guess that's a valid question. When you think of it from that point, this Terminator makes more sense. But after seeing Terminator Genesis and after seeing Terminator 3, we've seen more powerful Terminators that we've seen them able to take down with present day weaponry. So to me, I still think the Rev-9 was kind of a disappointment even though I really like Gabriel Luna's performance as the Rev-9. Something I also really enjoyed with the film was Mackenzie Davis's character Grace. I thought she was very well developed in this film and I liked her character arc in the film. Davis makes this character feel very real and I thought very likable. I think my only problem with her was that as capable and as impressive as her enhanced abilities are, she never really had a plan for dealing with the Rev-9 or any other potential Terminators. She seemed to just be reacting to the Terminator. Basically, it seemed like her plan was keep away, and that's not a very good plan when you're up against Terminators. And I would have thought that with all of her experience fighting the newer Terminators from the future, she would have had a better game plan because she's very nearly killed by the Rev-9 numerous times throughout the film, especially when they first meet. And so the next character I want to talk about was Natalia Reyes as Danny, and I felt Danny was probably the least developed of the characters, even though from a story perspective, she was probably the most important of the characters. I thought she had a lot of growth in the story, but I can't help but feel like she was overshadowed by Hamilton, Schwarzenegger, and Davis's characters during most of the film, and I felt like she was kind of a, like a secondary character to me. This could have been horrible if the other characters weren't as interesting, but I feel like it was just the price that we had to pay to have so many interesting characters on screen, sharing the screen, because there's only so much screen time. But the fact that you know, we had so many other stories interwoven in here, we had Carl's story, we, we had Sarah's story, we had Grace's story, and kind of to a lesser extent, we have the Rev-9 story. All of those stories combined, unfortunately, took away from Danny's overall importance in the film to me, even though from the perspective of the script and the story, she is the most important character but through the course of the film, to me, she felt like more of a secondary character. But I did like the character overall. So like I mentioned, overall, I like this movie a lot. It's a great action movie. If you just take it at face value, it's a great action movie. And you can sit back and enjoy it with some popcorn. And it's very fast paced. And I felt my heart beating like I was on a roller coaster or something. So that's... For me, that's a sign of a good action movie if it can make me feel that way, like I'm on a roller coaster. So the action set pieces were a real highlight of the film. And so when I thought I'd seen it all when it came to action movies, especially Terminator action movies, I found myself still on the edge of my couch with some of the action sequences like the airplane scene and the kill box scene at the end of the movie where they're at the dam. So in terms of a straight up action movie, I do feel this film delivers, but it's also a Terminator film and literally carries the baggage of the first two films, as well as the overall baggage of being the sixth entry in this series. And in this aspect, I didn't like it as much. I think the in-universe continuity is very unclear after the death of John Connor, but the way I interpreted it is that John's death affected the time stream and basically sent ripples of changes through time. So in the same way that it was described that Legion replaced Skynet 
as the big bad artificial intelligence, it's also implied to me that a new leader of humanity would rise up to take Connor's place, which would be Danny. To me, this was good and bad because it basically ensures that humanity will always have some sort of leader to fight the machines, but it also implies that a Judgment Day-like future is inevitable. No matter how many Terminators are stopped, it's just inevitable. I think story-wise, it was detrimental to the film because throughout the movie, the characters stressed the importance of Danny, just like John before her, but to me, it just seemed like based on the mechanics of the universe and the story, if she were to die, another person would just take her place. But throughout the film, they made her seem like humanity's only hope, just like they did for John before her. So to me, the very act of killing John and replacing him with another savior type character hurt the story overall. When the characters keep telling you how important she is, but you know that like John, if she were to fall, another would take her place. So I kind of think stuff like this is what hurt the story but was unavoidable due to them keeping the baggage of the first two films while trying to shake up the lore with this new entry. So I think the strongest parts of the film were Hamilton and Schwarzenegger's interactions and them sharing the screen. Hamilton has such a relatable ferocity and an understandable, genuine hatred of Terminators, but for me, it was genuinely my favorite parts of the film, having her witness what the Terminator who killed her son had evolved into. Schwarzenegger being a machine with those directives to kill John, it almost felt like he was an unwilling participant in John's death, but that's not quite true. His only purpose was to fulfill his prime directive, to kill John. And once he'd completed that, he was basically left purposeless. And I think the interesting thing with Carl is that it's led me to believe, or at least I, I interpreted that, the machines would eventually or could eventually achieve a higher state of sentience and even a semblance of humanity. I think one of my favorite lines in the film was when Danny was watching Carl leave his family and she asked him if if he loves them and Carl responds not like a human can. And to me this was very endearing and hinted that Carl was so much more than a machine who was just mimicking human emotion but I believe he'd gained sentience to be able to understand the concept of love and apply it in a way that is very similar to how humans would, while still realizing he has limitations in his ability to feel that love or that emotion. And that really struck a chord with me, and I think if he had lived, he could have continued to grow, and I think maybe even eventually his humanity, his emotions would eventually grow to becoming very parallel to human emotions, if not actually achieving human emotion down the line. So that would be kind of interesting. I don't know, I might be looking too much into that, but that was something that left a big impression on me with the film. So I really did enjoy that film, but mainly when I treat it as a separate entry and not directly related to the core two films as it was intended to be. As an action movie, it was great. There are some great character moments and the story overall suits the film, but as a Terminator film, I think it falls short. And I think it works way better as an alternate reality story, which I think a lot of fans have kind of relegated this film to. I think in the minds of a lot of fans, this is just kind of like an alternate reality story, just like kind of Terminator Salvation and probably Terminator Genesis, even though it's intended to directly follow the first two films and to continue that story. So I think if the producers and director were going to go the route of a new protagonist, i.e. Danny, I think a full reboot would have worked a lot better because I think it's near impossible to view the film on its own merits without comparing it to the other films it's directly connected to. Although this would have cost us probably my favorite aspects of the film, which would be Schwarzenegger and Hamilton. We would have got a new actor in the role of a T-800, and Linda Hamilton and Sarah Connor would be rebooted with a new actress if they chose to keep that character in there. So... Those, for me, were the best aspects of the film, so we would be losing those. That would be the huge trade-off for a complete reboot. But I think for them to have gone the route of introducing a new savior-type character, I think a full reboot would have worked best. As far as Terminators go, the Rev-9 is probably my least favorite Terminator. I just feel like it's not very imaginative, and I think the T-1000 and some of the other Terminators were far more threatening. But I think that one is definitely open for argument for those who love Rev9, because I'm sure you could point out some things that I probably missed. 
But unfortunately, I think for me, the Rev-9 Terminator was really a disappointment in this movie. Unfortunately for some, and fortunate for others who probably didn't like the movie, based on the overall negative reactions and poor box office of Terminator Dark Fate, it seems like this is the end for this Terminator reality. That's not to say it couldn't receive further stories via comic book or novel, but as far as films go, I think this is the end for this reality. I think overall I'm kind of sad because with how bad the movie flopped as well as the other previous films after T3, it seems less and less likely people will be willing to take a chance on this property and it's always been one of my favorite franchises. But I'd love to know what you all think. Do you think my assessment was fair or do you completely disagree with everything I've said? Let me know in the comments section. If you like the video, leave a like, share it if you want, and subscribe for more content. And if you like Twitch, you can check out my Twitch channel. I play lots of stuff, but horror games are my favorite. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.